Last time we visited Composite FX and the Mosquito Helicopter, we gave you a factory tour. Today, we return to show you an all-electric prototype they are currently playing with. Coming up. So back here in Trenton, Florida, and at Composite FX, they make the Mosquito aircraft and a couple different models of that. Norbert, introduce yourself. My name is Norbert Richter with Composite FX. I'm operations manager and engineer and janitor and everything else that it takes to get things done here. So we were here a few years ago, I want to say two or three years ago, we did a full-on factory tour showing you exactly how this is made, and I'll link a video to that uh, somewhere around here. But I came back today because they're working on something kind of new, more like a concept or a prototype. What do we got yeah. behind us? So this is a prototype. This is uh, our airframe, the XE airframe that we've modified to be fully electric. Uh, so when people hear about EV tall, um, that's exactly what we have. It's a vertical takeoff and, and landing machine. But now it's completely electric. And so it's our standard, um, it's our standard aircraft with a bunch of modifications, which is what prototypes are. So let's do a quick walk around and show the details of what we got so far. So this is our conventional XE airframe. You know it as the Mosquito XEL, as our XE, uh, XE290 or XET. It's all the same uh, uh, rotor gear, it's all the same fuselage and landing gear. What changes on our machines are model to model is engine assembly and instruments. And so in this one, this is a little bit of a kludge because we're trying to figure out how do we make an electric helicopter. And uh, I'm going to have uh, my associate Matthew walk you through the machine with specific technical. But we took side tanks uh, for our UAVs, um, which are normally meant to hold 20 gallons of liquids on either side, and we modified them to hold batteries. Uh, this, this machine happens to have one battery down below and two and two. That adds up to a certain voltage when they're full. And then Matthew can describe to you the engine assembly that we have uh, back behind us. All right, Matthew, uh, introduce yourself a little bit and who you are, what you do, and that kind of stuff. Hey, I'm uh, Matthew Alborn. I'm the electrical engineer here at uh, Composite Effects. The uh, XCV, our electric creation here, is a uh, project I've been working on for uh, quite a few months, and uh, I'm excited to show it off to you guys. Awesome. So kind of working from the, the top down or most exposed parts, what do we have here as far as the components of this EV? Right. So uh, we got our motors right here. Um, it's just our conventional drive line here. Um, we actually don't have a reduction here at all. We're just running this motor one to one with the tail. This motor is made by a company in Slovenia called MRAX. In particular, this is the 228 model. It is a 60 kilowatt continuous motor, 100 kilowatt peak, um, which we, uh, we use about 40 kilowatts in a, in a hover so far. We're uh, pretty early in the uh, prototype stage and testing stage, but Currently, it's about 20-25 minutes of uh, battery life um, in a hover. Did you say this is a 12 or 24 volt system? Right, this is a... We have a 12 volt battery in there for all the logic to, to drive the motor controller and stuff, but the batteries themselves, which I'll show in a bit, are um, a 336, 335 volt lithium chemistry, about 80 cells in series or so made by uh, LG Chem. So our motor controller here is made by uh, Sevcon. It's their uh, Gen 4 size 8 controller. It's about 100 con kilowatt continuous. Um, we use the air-cooled model and uh, we're actually using the uh, heat sink as a structural element here. Um, it's using our existing engine mounts for our piston engines in a slightly new configuration. The uh, motor itself, we have a radiator over here. We uh, liquid cool it. Um, helps to keep the uh, temps down. Well, it's the combined cooled model, but uh... What do you mean by combined cooled? So yeah, it, it is it is air cooled from the rotor itself, but it's also liquid cooled and that, that's mainly to cool down the, uh, the bearings and the uh, stator windings inside okay. of the motor. Okay. So uh, we have all of our bus bars and stuff down here, some pre-charged circuitry, uh, and uh, this down here, not a charging port, that's our safety safety plug. We can uh, use that to uh, isolate the battery pack if we need to uh, get into the packs themselves. 
So, okay, so from there you go into yep. the, the batteries themselves? Yep, I guess we'll move into the batteries here. So uh, Norbert said earlier we got two on each side, one underneath. These are, uh, as I said before, LG chem cells. They're about they're about three, 3.5 kilowatt hour each. Um, so we're, we're around 15 kilowatt hour of uh, battery capacity here, um, about 330, 335 volts. We don't have any cooling on these batteries actually. They're, uh, they're rated for about 450 amps continuous and our motor controller is only drawn about 120 amps. So uh, they actually stayed ambient in all of our testing so far. It's, uh, they're pretty good cells. The exact chemistry is uh, NMC, nickel manganese cobalt. Uh, it's just a good, Good amount of energy density um, compared to things like lithium iron phosphate. Now I assume uh, these are just off-the-shelf components, and where do they? Uh, yeah. What else did they serve in their life? Uh, these are actually have a OEM automotive application. I'll let you guys uh, figure out what vehicle they're out of. In a production, if, if this was to be a production, we would be using new cells or probably actually a custom pack design. But just for the uh, testing of at least the electric drive line, these were. A good fit. They already fit in our uh, water tanks, and um, they're uh, they're high quality cells. And what does it require to uh, charge them, and and the length right. of time? So with our current charger, it's about five hours. But these cells will take up to a 70 amp charge, which will bring it down to about half an hour if we had that that charging capability. If we had a charger that could actually provide that. And these particular ones, can you charge them in the vehicle in the craft, or do you have to remove them to charge them? Yeah, we actually have a plug hiding down there. It's just a, it's an off-board charger just to save some weight, um, but it just charges off a regular 240. Um, 240 volt will give you five hours. Uh, if you do a 120 volt charger, it's gonna be about 10 hours. Coming up, we'll show you just how different an all-electric drive system sounds spooling up on a helicopter. I'm at the airport a lot more these days editing and walking out of the FBO, out onto the ramp, it's bright. So I've been wearing my flying eyes eyewear a lot more these days. They're lightweight, extremely comfortable, flexible, and have micro thin temples that slip under your headsets. You like saving money? Get 10% off right now by using the code experimental. Check out the links below. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at aviatorsclinic.com. Diamond Doors at diamonddoors.com. Flying Eyes at flyingeyesoptics.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at flyfoxtrot95.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more.
So let's talk about just the tech in general to using an electric uh, option here for this vehicle. What is that going to do uh, as far as a benefit compared to a gas engine or even the, the jet engines that are in these? Right. So obviously battery tech isn't quite there yet to make this be um, something that could be be interesting to buyers. You know, 25 minutes, it's a bit of a hard sell. But what we're trying to prove here is that um, electric motor tech is definitely there. Uh, this motor is dead smooth. Um, if you see some videos of this later, it's, uh, it is as smooth as the turbine is. Um, and the advantages from what I understand with electric motors is that the torque is instantly there all the time, correct? Correct, yeah. And, and with a helicopter, and let's go back to the gas engines for a second, you're running them at not maybe 100% power, but 90% power the entire flight. So with this, basically once you get to the RPM you need, you set it and kind of forget it? Or talk to me about what the flight characteristics with an electric motor might be. Right, right. So one nice thing about this motor controller is that uh, you have no throttle input at all. It's actually totally governed. It's just two switches, you hit start, about 30 seconds later, it's, it's governed at its flight RPM, and all you gotta do is raise the collective, it holds the RPM. So it's, uh, it's definitely simple. That's actually kind of how our turbines are. You don't, you don't need to change the throttle up. It, it, it just, it holds it. And is the so. plan, obviously this is a prototype and this is a concept, is the plan for this to have more or less of the pilot interacting? Like, in other words, can you develop the software, you press a button, it goes through a start sequence, it goes up to the max torque, needed and it remains there during the flight or how, how walk us through that right so um once it's actually holding the speed at its governed rpm which for us is 2750 um, rpm one with our tail uh it motor controller calculates the torque requirements to hold that rpm so no throttle if you, if you pull pitch it will apply the torque to hold that rpm so it's definitely simpler than uh, having to uh, modulate the throttle in a piston engine. That's a whole nother thing that people have to learn and get used to. So in that regards, it is definitely um, simpler for the pilot to operate. One thing we found right now is actually we do need to add a uh, gear reduction to our motor. Right now it's one to one. We found that it actually, so we need to lower the torque basically on our motor. We're actually peeking out the motor controller right now. So, as I said, we run at about 40 kilowatts at 2750 RPM. Um, you guys can do the math to find the torque from that. But uh, what we found is uh, we need to raise the RPM a bit, keep speed constant right now, or keep the uh, keep the uh, power constant, but less torque. So if you raise the speed, you lower the torque. If you lower the torque, you lower the amps going into the motor. Helps to keep everything uh, a bit cooler. So those are some of the changes we need to do actually uh, before we'll, we'll see that true 25 minutes of continuous flight time. The battery life will, will last that long, but right now we're uh, have to make a bit of changes. It's still very early. We're only about five tests into this. As an experimental build, I don't know if this is a model that could really be offered as a kit build. It, it's high voltage um, and you, you need to know what you're doing with these batteries. You can't miswire the battery management system and all that. It's, uh, it's safe when done correctly. But for a home build application, it, it might be uh, asking a lot out of our, our customers, I think. So one of the things we're looking at actually is um, to develop a hybrid option f for a drone application where basically we're gonna have a motor on board as well, internal combustion engine that will uh, provide uh, either battery charging or you know, the, uh, assist the torque of the motor directly. Um, not sure yet if it's gonna be a parallel or a series style of hybrid where it could be uh, right off the same shaft as the motor or if it's going to be a separate generator an engine inside of here to charge the batteries whether whichever option we choose when we go to a hybrid we're probably going to go with less batteries in general just because of the uh, the, the weight of the batteries and we wouldn't need as much as well we have a uh, an engine providing power if you would like for us to do a follow-up episode on the Composite FX all-electric Mosquito Helicopter, fill up the comment section of what you would like to know. In the meantime, visit composite-fx.com to learn more about their in-production helicopters.
Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode.